We did not get a chance to finish discussing capsules in particular, so I wanted to put together a quick uh, quick video lecture for you on this really critical cell surface structure. So first thing I want you to know about this idea of a capsule is that it is not universal. Okay, We're getting into optional equipment here. Not all bacteria have it, but a lot of them do. And the ones that do have some specific properties because of these capsules. So what are we talking about when we talk about a capsule? Well, a capsule is an extracellular polymeric substance that is tightly bound to a cell. Okay, so EPS, extracellular polymeric substance. These are primarily carbohydrates, long polysaccharides. Sometimes there's some protein mixed in there, but for the most part, these are long polysaccharides. It's a very gooey, sticky, snotty, boogery kind of material that many bacteria have the ability to produce and attach to their outermost layer. So this would be on a gram positive outside of that thick peptidoglycan wall. And on a gram negative, it would be outside of the LPS layer if it existed. So how do we define EPS? It's a viscous substance. You know what viscous means? Thick substance. Think of like oil as more viscous than water. There's a viscous substance surrounding many, not all, bacterial cells composed of primarily polysaccharide. Sometimes there's some protein in there. An old-fashioned term that is still kicked around sometimes is glycocalyx. So if you see that term, you should be thinking, aha, the glycocalyx. Now I know what we're talking about. So EPS would be the chemical, and a capsule would be the structure made out of EPS. Now if that EPS is tightly bound to the cell, meaning as the cell moves around, the capsule kind of goes along with it and sort of retains its shape, and we call it a capsule. If, however, it's really loose uh, around the cell, there's some species that the glycocalyx, the EPS, is really loose. So as they move, they're sort of sloughing it off, and it's coming off of the surface of the cells. We call it a slime layer. Capsule is the most common term that we use, and to some degree, honestly, the two terms have kind of gotten jumbled up. So if you see the word capsule or the phrase slime layer, you should think, aha, that's that thing glycocalyx Cummings was talking about. This is a snotty, gooey layer outside of all the other layers in the cell envelope. It's made of this EPS material, but why, right? So that's the, the, the first real question we wanna answer. Here's a picture for you of Streptococcus pneumoniae. In class, I've told you that clinically we call this the pneumococcus. Uh, you notice if you look in that image, two things. One is that pneumococcus exists as a diplococcus. So you see lots of diplococci. And the stain that they used uh, is, is what we call a negative stain, where it stains the background kind of gray so that it highlights any structures around the cell like a capsule. You can see that sort of gooey, spherical, almost ovoid type shape around many of those, most of those diplococci. The pneumococcus, pneumococci are known for this capsule. This capsule is is thought of as a virulence factor, meaning a, 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 a molecular structure that's important for the organism to be able to cause disease. It's a very important virulence factor for the pneumococci. Um, if you, in the laboratory, force it to lose its capsule, all of a sudden it becomes almost completely non-pathogenic. So very important virulence factor. How does that work? What's the role? Let's take a look, right? So EPS, where do we see it? What does it play a part in? Uh, the first is in attachment to surfaces. So in the picture you see here, bottom left, uh, this is what we call a biofilm. And the next video is on biofilm, so watch that after you've seen this. Take a look at highlight, uh, the highlight on page 66 in your Bowman textbook. It talks about the importance of biofilms. But a biofilm is really all these bacteria. It can be a pure culture or it can be mixed, different species all sort of embedded in one another's capsules, where they're all producing so much capsule that it's all kind of running together and they're all stuck to a surface. So the first role that we know of for these capsules is that they're important for attaching to surfaces. I'll show you a picture of that uh, on the next slide. Bottom bullet that you see down here is that they're important for protecting against the immune system. So here's a macrophage here, a phagocytic white blood cell, and it's chasing down bacteria and extending these long pseudopodia, grabbing onto these bacteria, bringing them in, engulfing them and phagocytosing them, and destroying them using its lysosomes. That's how white blood cells kill foreign bodies. 
when those foreign bodies happen to be bacteria that have a capsule, it turns out that not only is it harder for the macrophages and other phagocytic cells to actually find the bacteria because the cell surface proteins are being masked by this gooey snotty layer on the surface. But then even if they do find it, it becomes slippery, literally physically slippery and difficult then to attach to and to engulf. So from a, an infectious diseases perspective, this is one of the most important reasons that a capsule is an important virulence factor. So we got biofilm formation because of attachment to surfaces. We have protection against host immunity. And then it turns out that it also resists desiccation. Desiccation is a, a fancy word for drying out. So you think of, for example, the human mouth, right? If you run your, your tongue along your teeth right now, while you're sitting here watching this video, just go ahead and do it. I'll know if you don't you can feel biofilm on the surfaces of your teeth. There are attached bacteria, primarily streptococci, like streptococcus mutans you see in this slide here, that have secreted their, their EPS, made a capsule, embedded their capsule into everybody else's capsule, and all these this layers of bacteria living on the surface of the teeth and making a living out of it. If you think about the mouth as a moist place, we're kind of missing the point here. There's tons of air moving across the surface, and bacteria on the surface of your teeth are absorbed to all that drying air, and it's believed that the capsule, that EPS, absorbs water and keeps the bacteria themselves hydrated so they don't die. Uh, we'll talk more about bacteria and teeth a little bit later in the semester. So for now, I want you to understand that a capsule is a real important extracellular structure, very common, not universal, but very common in both gram positives and gram negatives. It's important in um, attachment to surfaces, in biofilm formation, in avoiding our immune system, and we'll come back to that later in the semester. And from the bacteria's perspective, it's important for them so they don't dry out under dry conditions, like when they're attached to the teeth on the mouth. So after you've watched this video once or twice, you feel like you understand what's going on, go ahead and watch the next video, which is on biofilms, and then let me know if you have any questions.